Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Jimmy Kimmel blames Second Amendment nuts for Vegas again, Ben Shapiro crushes him. Talk show host Jimmy Kimmel blamed Republicans for the second night in a row for somehow being responsible for the shooting in Las Vegas. I'm not gonna get deep into it again, I said what I had to say last night. But I do want to say something to these nuts who spend most of the day to day on television and online attacking those of us who think we need to do something about the fact that 59 innocent people were killed, said Kimmel. They say it's inappropriate to be talking about it because it's too soon. Well, maybe it's too soon for you, because deep down inside in your heart, you know you bear some responsibility for the fact that almost anyone can get any weapon they want. And now you want to cover yourself until the storm of outrage passes, and you can go back to your dirty business as usual," said Kimmel. But it's not too soon for us, because we're Americans, and the last time I checked, the First Amendment is at least as important as the Second Amendment. So we will talk about it, and shame on you for suggesting we do otherwise," said Kimmel. Conservative firebrand Ben Shapiro explained why Jimmy Kimmel is being such an idiot. Even the guns that he was using, I'm not sure there's any evidence that gun control would have done anything. He obtained his weapons legally, he had gone through federal background checks, there's no evidence of significant mental illness to this point, so all this seems like is people shouting do something while they have no particular solutions and no expertise on guns or gun control. The suggestion that gun control is going to put an end to incidents like this, that is an evidence-less proposition based on an emotional response," said Ben Shapiro. Lawyer Lee Sublum caught paying women shocking amounts of money to come forward against Trump. Feminist lawyer Lee Sublum has helped women with accusations against President Trump. As it turned out, she really helped them. Like she offered one woman $750,000 to come forward against the president. Who wouldn't accuse Trump of sexual assault for that kind of money? California lawyer Lisa Bloom's efforts included offering to sell alleged victims' stories to TV outlets in return for a commission for herself, arranging a donor to pay off one Trump accuser's mortgage and attempting to secure a six-figure payment for another woman who ultimately declined to come forward after being offered as much as $750,000, the clients told The Hill, writes The Hill. Lisa Bloom defended herself. You'll recall the very polarized and hostile atmosphere of 2016 presidential election. Emotions were running high, there were incidents of violence on the campaign trail, and threats of violence were a real and abiding concern. Nonetheless, several brave women came forward to accuse Donald Trump of harassment and assault, she said. Donors came forward with offers of financial help to ensure the safety of the women who would come forward. I was happy to relay those offers of funds for relocation to a safer community and round-the-clock security," she said. I can say unequivocally that we did not communicate with Hillary Clinton nor anyone from her campaign. We did not communicate with the Democratic National Committee or Perkins Coie, the DNC law firm, about the Trump accusers. Your questions seem to imply that we were trying to use the prospect of donor funds to entice women to come forward against their will. Nothing can be further from the truth," she said. No one said against their will. Whoopi says there's no war on Christmas and that it's only in Trump's head. Liberals have been suing people who want to put up nativity scenes in public places and former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chaffee even went so far down the political correctness tunnel that he officially renamed the state capitol's Christmas tree a holiday tree. This does not even cover how countless leftists have been whitewashing the religious holiday by arm-twisting people to use inoffensive terms like Happy Holidays and Seasons Greetings instead of Merry Christmas. Somehow, however, 
The View host Whoopi Goldberg believes that the well-documented war on Christmas exists solely within Republican President Donald Trump's mind. Goldberg began by slamming Trump for telling stores to say Merry Christmas again, while at the same time his Jewish convert daughter Ivanka tweeted Happy Holidays. Stated Goldberg, the president insisted to his supporters that Americans would be saying Merry Christmas again, despite the fact that nobody ever stopped saying Merry Christmas. So I wonder what he thinks about his daughter's tweet wishing everyone Happy Holidays. She went on, lots of people will say Happy Holidays because not everybody celebrates Christmas, but that doesn't mean that we all can't party during the holiday or the Christmas holiday or whatever, okay? Conservative Meghan McCain disappointingly backed her up, saying, I don't interject myself into the war on Christmas because I think it's gravely overblown. I've never said Merry Christmas to anyone ever and they've been offended. I don't think that's something that exists. Co-host Sonny Hostin then asked, So where is that coming from? Answered Whoopi, his brain. Do you think the biased hosts of The View are part of the war on Christmas? Liv just said slaughter of country music fans in Vegas is blood sacrifice to gun rights. Liberals clearly are not prepared to cope with the gravity of a tragedy like the mass shooting that just occurred in Las Vegas. Instead of trying to gain a full, nuanced understanding of the situation and determining how shooter Stephen Paddock was likely affected by mental health problems, they are instead trying to blame the Second Amendment. Some liberals' thinking has gotten out of hand that they have been making dangerous and, frankly, absurd statements about the shooting," wrote liberal Esquire writer Charles S. Pierce recently in a laughable article in his mainstream magazine, The Constitution is not a pact with the devil, nor is it a suicide pact. It is a formalized, legalistic ritual of blood sacrifice. He continued, making a disgusting comment about country music lovers. There are some things that we as a society, alas, must tolerate in order to stay true to our founding beliefs and to remain free. School children shot to pieces is one of those things. The massacre of country music fans is another one of those things, the 273rd blood sacrifice to that one provision of the Constitution this year. He then blamed Christians for the violence, writing, Christians believed that the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary obviated forever the need for further blood sacrifice. However, not even that could obviate or eliminate the entirely secular desire for blood sacrifice within a society perceived to have gone astray. He added, Christians pray to the crucified Christ. Christians also push the plungers that send the poisons into the veins of prisoners. Christians believe that atonement comes through the intercession of Jesus. Christians also believe that atonement comes from smart bombs and predator drones. Do you think it's sick that a magazine with articles like this in it is sold in every supermarket and pharmacy? MSNBC's Joy Reid makes a disgusting accusation against Trump for standing up to San Juan Mayor. SNBC's Joy Reid made a disgusting accusation against President Trump for daring to criticize the mayor of San Juan. It is interesting that Donald Trump's reflex is to say that a woman, a woman of color, you know, is an ingrate, or to attack, or to say the people of Puerto Rico essentially are too lazy to help themselves, want something from the federal government that they won't provide to themselves, said San Juan, ignoring the fact that President Trump isn't the one who started it. You know, he actually went on that tweet storm, which was the most he had talked about Puerto Rico at all, a year to the day after he attacked Alicia Machado, the former Miss Universe. Donald Trump has a particular reflex to attack women, to attack women of color, and to signal boost to his base this idea that people of color are lazy and dependent and won't do for themselves. He's sharing that with a large portion of his base, said Reid. He's evincing what we eventually did see in Katrina, this idea that the people who were, you know, suffering in New Orleans were at fault, that they were people who were undeserving and unworthy. That had a racial component. This has a racial component, said Reed.
The difference is George W. Bush wasn't leading the white tribalism that did eventually get turned on the people in the Katrina situation. Donald Trump is leading it, said Reid. Joy Reid is proving to be one of the most intellectually dishonest people on all of television, and that is saying a lot. He's beautiful, Brian Cranston says some creepy things about Colin Kaepernick. Breaking Bad star Brian Cranston had some really high praise for Colin Kaepernick. He loves how Kaepernick is protesting and even called him very patriotic. Dissent is one of the pillars of being an American. It's how our country was formed, through dissension, said Cranston. He then said Kaepernick is not preventing anyone from singing or partaking in how they want to experience that moment. He's quietly, respectfully, being silent. I think it's a beautiful way of protesting the racial injustice that he feels is present. And I share that with him. There is an injustice, said Cranston. He went on to compare the situation with Kaepernick to his new film Last Flag Flying. That's what we explore in Last Flag Flying, the similarities between a GI in Vietnam and a GI in the Iraq War. We try to do it honestly. It's not a slam of the military. It's an examination of it. To say there are good parts and there are bad parts, just as with anything in life, said Cranston. I'm a guy who would be deemed a liberal from Hollywood. I think that should be stopped as well, he said. That because you align yourself with a social policy that is more liberal than others may be, that doesn't make me not patriotic. Because I'm not wearing an American flag pin on my lapel doesn't make me unpatriotic. It's not that. It's who you are. It's your actions. It's your belief. It's how responsible you are in your conversations, said Cranston. They hate this country. Jackie Mason eviscerates bratty NFL kneelers. Comic legend Jackie Mason just made an epic video blasting all of the so-called discriminated millionaire football players who are kneeling for the national anthem. How far is this gonna go? You think pretty soon they'll start holding their noses during the Pledge of Allegiance? Said Mason. Did you hear about all these actors who have all this sympathy, and they're all identifying with everybody who's down on their knees? They're walking around, as soon as they see somebody, they get down on their knee. You know why? They're looking for an opportunity to show you how they can't stand this country. The more money they make, the more they hate this country, said Mason. How do you suffer from discrimination with $3 million in each pocket? Another reason they're kneeling is because they can't stand Trump, said Mason. Many football players have well over $3 million in each pocket. He also went after Robert Redford who said that Trump should resign for the benefit of the country. How come he never told Bill Clinton to resign for the safety of the women in this country? Incidentally, I would ask Robert Redford to resign, but I don't know from what, because the man hasn't been working in 30 years, said Mason. Did you see Robert Redford's last picture? You know why you didn't see it? Because the only place it was seen was his own living room. It was also seen in his kitchen, but if you didn't go in for an omelette, you never heard about it, said Mason. 